this this is the bike I actually asked for. Triumph launched the new 1200 Speed Triple RS at the beginning of this year. Absolute blind of a bike. We had a wicked time thrashing it around our local test track, Landau. At the end of the day, we concluded that it was an awesome bike, but it'd be great to try one with clip-on handlebars and a bit of a bikini fairing. I'm not saying Triumph listened to us because clearly they were developing it already, but they give us a coy smile and now we know why. This is the new Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. What is it? Well, at first glance, it is basically a Speed Triple RS with clip-ons and a funny fairing. Triumph didn't want us to say that. They wanted to say it's more than that. And in fairness to them, it really is. It does take the Speed Triple RS as a basic bike and adds a few simple tweaks and kind of refinement of the package to make it more sporty to give quite a different riding experience. So let's talk through the changes first of all. Biggest, most obvious, this cockpit fairing and the restyled front end. I absolutely love it. There's been a bit of a mixed reaction to it. Some people love it, some people hate it. It does look amazing in the flesh especially in this kind of deep candy red paint which is a 250 quid option over the top of the 17,950 pounds base price with that new fairing comes the lower handlebars and the higher and further setback foot pegs which changes it from your sit up and beg naked sports bike into something more of a sports roadster so the riding position falls for me kind of nicely halfway between an out and out sports bike and the naked sit up and beg version of the speed triple rs for the right person it's kind of the Goldilocks recipe, it's just right. I found today, bombing along the road, the lower bars and the more sporty riding position felt much, much better when you're attacking a set of corners, but it's not so extreme that when you're cruising through a village or sat on the motorway, you're constantly having to adjust because your wrists are aching. You can still distribute a fair bit of your weight through the foot pegs and through the seat. As far as road riding goes, I'm a huge fan of the new riding position and it gives just a sporty twist on what was already an awesome fun road bike. If you're fully into your aggressive sports bikes and aren't really looking to change away from that world, this is probably gonna feel a bit too roady. And likewise, if you're the hardcore Speed Triple RS customer who loves your naked sports bike, this might feel a little bit sporty for you. So for the right person, it's gonna be amazing. It's not gonna be right for everyone, but hey, that's the whole point of a, a compromise halfway house bike. So the other big change I wanna talk about on the Speed Triple 1200RR is the suspension. Rather than the RS, which has the very analog but very high quality Olin suspension, the RR gets Olin's electronically adjustable semi-active suspension. And with that, what Triumph are trying to do is make this bike the best of both worlds. By having semi-active suspension that can adapt the damping to the conditions you're riding, you can have a bike that's more comfortable, more compliant on a bumpy road, yet when you start turning up the wick and hammering the throttle and being hard on the brakes, giving the bike a bit more body control so it's not pitching back and forth. In theory, this suspension can give you a better riding experience, particularly on the road, than suspension that you just set to one setting and ride it there all day. On track, maybe not so much difference because once you've got a good track setting in the bike, it's going to work kind of as well as the semi-active stuff will. But the track isn't where this thing's focused. This is meant to be, in Triumph's words, the ultimate road sports bike. And I think they've done a really good job of heading down that path. One of the really clever things about the Olin's semi-active suspension is the adjustment that you're allowed within the dash. Rather than old school adjustment where you go, I'll have two clicks on compression damping, three clicks on rebound damping, which is great if you know exactly what that stuff does. This has kind of got a built-in suspension setup technician. So even if you're not a suspension expert, you can look through it and say, I kind of want the bike to do this, pick which menu you want to do that, and it'll make the adjustments for you. It's a really unique way, and a, I think a really clever way of giving more of us a bit more control in adjusting our own bikes. Essentially, it's like having a Swedish suspension technician built into your instruments. So the other big difference on this bike is the tires it comes on. Again, it's a bike geared towards more aggressive, more sporty riding. So it comes with a Super Corsa SP V3 tire for the road. And then the ones we rode on the track today had a Super Corsa SC2, which is like a track compound version of the same tire. 
on the road for me is exactly where this bike shines. It is a great step towards sports bikes from a naked sports bike without compromising too much, without ending up as a really aggressive, really sharp, angry road bike. The riding we did today was on a beautiful, flowing, smooth mountain pass. At no point did I wish for a more sporty forming bike. At no point did I wish for anything more aggressive. This for me was right on the money for that ride. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to really push how good a road bike it is. For that, we really need to ride a mix of B roads, A roads. You need a little bit of cold, a little bit of wet, and a little bit of early morning to really understand how well the ergonomics work in less than perfect road situations, and also how well the Olin suspension can cope with that range of surfaces. So far, very promising. Really, really enjoyed the road ride, but I'm holding my verdict back until I've given it a proper thrash on roads that I know and love back in the UK. So the next thing to test, What's it like on track? After I finished playing on this bike's sister, the RS, I had a really, really good fun day on track, but it did leave me wanting something a little bit more sporty. I wanted lower bars, higher pegs, and something I could get in a better body position with and really make the most of the motor and chassis. That's exactly what this bike does. With the more aggressive riding position, suddenly everything feels more natural on track. Now, I don't want you to think the Speed Triple RS isn't good on track, because it is. It's a really fun track bike, but you're always kind of fighting against the position your hands are in. Your hands are always kind of in the way for the body position you want to adapt for proper fast track riding. Likewise, the pegs start to get in the way a little bit earlier, and you end up knocking toe sliders out in no time at all. This RR, with the more aggressive setup on the handlebars and pegs, the electronic suspension working really well in track mode to stiffen things up and keep things under control, I found it absolutely phenomenal track it gets to the point where you're riding it so hard you start making comparisons to actual super sports bikes i found myself kind of going oh i'd like a slightly sharper steering or i'd you know maybe like even higher pegs or and you start wanting the bike to be things that would actually ruin it on the road but for me that's testament to how well this thing does perform on track the motor is still, I think, hands down, one of the best triples Triumph has ever made. It's so nice on track, you can be so lazy with the gears that you can kind of just leave it a gear too high and ride the torque out of the curves. Which, on a technical track like this one here at Ascari, actually opens up a few sections of the circuit and makes them really enjoyable to ride, whereas on a peakier bike, you can find yourself kind of fighting against the gear ratios a little. When you start pushing this thing to its absolute limit on track, that is when you bump up against the fact that it is still not full-on super sports bike. I found myself on some of the ballsier, fast, fast corners here at Ascari, just wanting a little bit more feel, a little bit something more from the front tyre. I'm sorry I'm being vague here because the bike can absolutely do it, but where I know on a sports bike I'd have been slamming the thing on my knee with a bit more confidence. This took a bit more pulling into the turn in those sections, which is kind of, for me, the limit of this bike. That said, the pace I'm running at that point is way more than fast enough to be quick in any fast group track day. And I wouldn't want to compromise how good this was on the road by changing it to try and make it that nth degree better on the circuit. Now elsewhere on track, you just end up riding this big wave of torque, destroying rear tires and putting a massive smile on your face. The riding position was aggressive enough that you can get into a proper track riding corner in position, elbow down, knee down, all possible. And at the end of the day, you get to ride home on something that I think looks phenomenal and stands out from the race replica crowd. So I must have some complaints about this bike, and I do. Nothing major, but one thing that bugged me was the front brake. I found that the lever feel was a bit squishy and a bit heavy for my like. The performance of the brake, absolutely fine. Perfect on track, never had an issue with that. I just didn't have a nice feel with the lever. It just feels a bit squishy and a bit too much like there's a lot of movement in it all the time. It's a little bit of a factor of modern ABS braking systems compared to a non-ABS system. You're moving a lot more fluid around the bike, so they all have a bit of that feel. The only things that I came up against on track were things that didn't matter things that actually would have ruined the bike on the road, so you can't really pick on it for them. 
pegs a little bit low compared to a super sport bike. Would like a slightly sharper, more precise front end, like more like a super sport bike. But I would take the bike exactly as it is rather than make any compromises to how good it was as a road bike. So here's the big question. What's the point? Why would you have a Speed Triple 1200RR rather than a Speed Triple 1200RS? Well, for me, there's kind of two answers to that question. One, I think a lot of people will pick it because they love the styling or not pick it because they don't. For me, I love the styling and I prefer the look of this to the RS. And secondly, if you want something that's a bit more sporty and you enjoy sports road riding, but don't want to go down the full super sport route, this is a bike that is just as natural being ridden in jacket and jeans cruising to, cruising to the shops as it is going out in full leathers and having a good old scratch out. It kind of treads that balance nicely. The nature of any bike that acts as a halfway house is that the compromise will be perfect for some people, whereas others will either find it too sporty or not sporty enough. How well it works will be told by the numbers in the sales over the next year. Triumph has made a bike that is kind of unique in this sector. It's not shouty, it's not aggressive, it's not angry. It's a smooth, refined, well-finished bike that looks stunning, rides very, very well. And ultimately, while it's not got the chaos and the noise of the KTM and the Ducati, it's still a 180 PS bike. It's not slow and you can put in some flipping hot laps on it. I've got a massive smile on your face. People are always going to ask, people are always going to be banging at Triumph's door, wanting a 1,000cc version of the legendary Daytona 675. This is the closest thing Triumph's ever come to producing that. And you know what? In a way, I think this is a more exciting and more relevant bike than an out-and-out litre sports bike from Triumph. This bike is more things to more people. It's more usable more of the time. And while it doesn't have the big kind of hero status of a full-on 220 horsepower superbike. In actual riding conditions, I think you'll have more fun on this than you would on a full-blown sports bike on the road and to a degree on the track too. It's pretty, it's fast, and it sounds like God.